The Catfish Association of Nigeria, CAFAN, says Nigeria produced 370,000 metric tons of catfish in 2016. This is valued at about 175 billion naira. With this record, catfish farming contributes about 4.5% of Nigeria's gross domestic product GDP, providing over 2 million jobs to Nigerians across the entire fish production value chain. Mustafa Kumadi, chief promoter of Kumadi Farms, is one of millions of Nigerian trained accountants who could not find jobs in paid employment several years back, but turned to catfish farming for fulfillment. Kumadi Farms is one of the latest beneficiaries of the Bank of Industries intervention in aquaculture. The company has two farms, one at the chief promoter's backyard in Abuja, the main farm, a 3,000 square meter facility in Nasara State, houses their earthen ponds. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Welcome to Kumadi Farms. I met him at the house in Abuja. So at the backyard, I have the hard archery there. Okay. I have where I do some grow out here. Okay. And that is the smoking king. Oh, yeah, the smoking king. Yeah. You can see some fishes in it. All right. This is the smoking oh. cane. I've had the smoking cane for over five years. Uh, so why are they so swollen? They are big, big fishes. But with time, as this, the fire hits them, they, it, will, it will soften them and they get back to their shapes. Yeah, it won't keep remaining like this. You can feel water, water. You can see water dripping. Then here we have some tanks for grow out. Like this tank here, I picked, I selected some fishes from the farm so that I can grow them for, for, for parents to stock again. I'm keeping this for the next five years. Then in this tank here, I have the female fish I used to hatch. I, I used her last week. I used her last week, so she's back here to gain back strength and energy before I return her to the pond. Here I have some grow out too in these tanks. Some few grow out. So you can see them, they are two, three months old. So in the next four weeks they will be ready. In the next two, three weeks they will be ready for, for, for harvest. This is the result from that female fish you saw earlier there. But this one, you know they are, they are almost two weeks. You know, if you've seen the parent mother there, she's still resting. We have the, the broodstock. We have fishes of seven years old. Seven? Yes, yeah, some four years old and three years old. How long can a catfish live? 30 to 35 years. Yeah, they are mud fish. Well, I think I can pick some out so that you can have a clear look at a seven-year-old fish, right? These are seven years old. Wow! <laughs> Very heavy. Oh, very heavy. This can weigh from like 8 kg to 10, if not above. Kumadi Farms is a joint venture between three gentlemen, Mustafa Kumadi, Victor Essien, and Solomon Kolo. The following day, we left the city center in Abuja and headed for the farm in Nasarawa. In this farm, we have about 27 ponds, and we have over, over 30,000 fishes right now for grow out. Yeah. Go and get more fish so that we can feed them and then see how they will feed. Please, give us some food. Okay. 
Solomon Kolo is the third partner in the Kumadi Fish Farm joint venture. He's in charge of product distribution and logistics. I'm in charge of um, moving the feed from the fish from the from the meal to the farm, and uh, the fingerlings when they are hatched, and uh, by the time they get to a fingerling, we just move them to the farm, stock the the, the, the ponds in the farm with the fingerlings. So I'm in charge of all that, and uh, if there's any need to to get some medications. I do that runs too. Where are all your customers in terms of those that buy fingerlings from you and newly hatch the fish? Yeah, they're all here in the city of Abuja. For now, we, 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 we have a lot of farmers come to us to buy fingerlings. And uh, we most of the time help them to, we help transport them to their farms because it's not everybody that knows how to transport fish. You know, sometimes you just put them in the, we usually transport them in the, in the jerry cans, put a little bit of oil to, 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 to help ease their stress in the course of transportation. So getting them to the farm, then we then empty them into their ponds, then we, we allow the farmers to take care of their fishes. Tell me about your customer base. We have like 90% of our customers in the city of Abuja. Just few from the neighboring state like uh, Nasarawa, Niger, and uh, some come from Lokoja. It's not a seasonal business. Fish, fish business is a continuous thing. You do it all year round. You stock six months after. You you just keep stocking. You know it's a continuous thing. You don't you don't get to a point where you say, okay, well, r right now let me just rest and then have a, a, a deep breath. No, you know we that uh, you know. Uh, we that have hatches back home, as you are hatching and they're getting to a certain stage, you are hatching again, they're getting to a certain stage. As these ones are moving to the farm, those other ones are on the line. So you can see that it's a continuous thing. By the time this one, have, you've grown those out and then sold them out, you still have others coming up. I can imagine there's someone watching this program right now yeah. and they are fascinated about what they have seen on this farm. Yeah. Your colleague talked to me about the need to have requisite knowledge, yeah. adequate knowledge sure. to run this business successfully. Yeah. Can you tell us the basic things that you must know or you must have to be a successful entrant into this business? You must have money. If you don't have money, you don't venture into fish business. Because if you don't have a capital base to start with, you run into a whole lot of loss and you must have knowledge of the fish farm. Let me give you an, an instance. There is a family friend of ours that had that there's a lot of money in fish business and he decided to venture into it. And uh, he didn't ask questions and he didn't go learning more about fishing and he decided to put in so much money into it and he lost all his money. So if somebody asks him about fish business, he'll tell him, say, look, that's not, that, that is no-go area. But I can assure you, fish business is a good business if you understand the, the operations. I would like to have specific uh, examples. What are the red flags? Well, the red flags are, one, you must be able to identify when your fish the, the fish in your pond have problems. When you notice a little problem in your in your in your pond, you should be able to quickly evacuate and treat the pond before you now restock those fishes. But if you ignore those little little signs, you're going to run into a, a big time loss.